Hello again viewers. Yes, it's Peter Elgar Photography again. This time it's part two of my little lecture on the Minolta autofocus cameras and um, this is the lenses. When I was lucky enough to be given all this lot, I thought, oh my God, it's going to take me ages to learn how to use them because I've never had Minolta, but I'm gradually getting round to it. Now the earliest one is the one that came with this camera I showed you, the famous Minolta AF7000, that was 1985, and it came with this lens fitted. Now this is a 28 to 80 zoom, and no, 28 to 85, and it has a macro set in here, which I have actually used for some close-up work. And it bayonets on the camera, as I showed you previously, with red dot to red dot, there we are. And then it has a, a lens hood that you can clip on, goes on like that. that. That is the earliest lens that came with it. And it's quite heavy, it does zoom out nicely, and um, it is very sharp because I've done some pictures with this one. Now the Minolta AF 7000 was the original and very first Minolta autofocus camera so it's now classed as a bit old-fashioned and very heavy. Then the Dynax series came out and we've got several here. I've got an autofocus 35 to 70 and the maximum aperture is 3.5 and as you zoom out it goes down to 4.5. Now some of these have got UV filters on which I haven't taken off because it's, it's so much stuff to take on and off. The zoom in action is this and I've got some pictures taken with that when I was given my Min Minolta Dynax 500 SI. It goes down to th from 35 to 70. Now there's no aperture values marked on these lenses because you have to look in the little window on the camera for the LCD values of the aperture. Now that's quite a good little lens but there's, there's another one which is called the XI series. Now this is a 28 to 80. It's very similar to the 35 to 70 but this time it's called the XI, a Zoom XI series. Now with that, when it's on the camera, you push that ring down and twist it one way or the other, 28 that way or 80 that way, and, it, and it, the camera makes it zoom automatically for you. All right, you don't have to twist it to make it zoom. Strange sort of thing. <coughs> when you have it in manual focus also, you put your camera to manual focus and you turn that ring. It's an XI lens. Um, I looked at that, but I haven't actually used it because I didn't think it was working. That came with the 3XI Dynax, but I've just tested it again today on the 500XI, and indeed it does stop down. Now then, we've got some later ones here, which are 28 to 80, because that's a 28 to 80, but this, this is all metal and that was all plastic. Now the plastic ones came with the later 5 and 40 series. Here's the Dynax 5, which I showed you with the camera bodies. That is all plastic and it's got very, very light over the years. And so these lenses have also got extremely light. People didn't want to carry heavy gear. There we are, that's bayoneted on. You, you, you fit the lens hood here with a bayonet lens hood, like this. And I can get the right fitting. You, there we are, there's the zoom here, 80 millimeters to 28 millimeters. And um, this will focus down fairly close to um, 0.4 of a meter. And um, I've used that one. But that really, there's not much difference between that and the next one in the Dynax series, 
which is the 28 to 100. Now, I don't know why Minolta keep buying and bringing out these different lenses because there's hardly any difference. That's a 28 to 100. 3.5 down to um, 5.6. It's a D series. Now, these D series lenses are to go with the autofocus flashes, which you can fit into the hot shoe, and it measures the distance and sends a signal to the flash how far away the lens is focusing, it's D series, and it, it sort of gives you a better, more accurate flash evidently, but I haven't got the Minolta autofocus flashes, but there's very little difference between them. Then we come to these zooms, and I've got three 70 to 210 zoom lenses. And why have I got three? Well, they, they all cost me nothing, so that's why I've got them. But would I buy them? Well, it's difficult to say, but I have tested them. This is a 3.5 to 4.5. It varies according to how you zoom it out. The further you go, the smaller the maximum aperture gets. This is quite a heavy lens, but because it's got some metal in it, and it zooms out. Now, when it, it, there's a focus limitator here. You press that, and you can, you can stop it from hunting. There we are. It zooms right out like that. Now, there's another lens which I got, and this time it's also a 70 to 210. It's smaller. And this time, it's maximum aperture is 4.5, down to 5.6. Now, I've used that one as well. Uh, there's very little difference except in the number of lens elements. This 3.5 one has 12 elements. This one has only 10. So there's 10 elements in that because they restricted the maximum aperture to 4.5. Um, I don't think that one is quite as sharp as the other one. But the best lens of, in this range, I think it's a massive one, is the famous beer can. Here we are. This is the Minolta 70-210 f4 beer can lens. And this is a very famous lens because it doesn't change its aperture as you zoom. It maintains the aperture of f4 throughout its zoom range. And I've taken some picture with that on the AF7000 um, and it gives you very sharp results. Now, there was a guy on YouTube who compared it with his thousand dollar odd Sigma. And you can get these for about hundred dollars. And he reckons this beat his Sigma lens and uh, quite a lot of times. And I've, I've taken some good shots with this. This camera's going mad, beeping, there it goes. <laughs> One second. It's um, zoom in here, and the lens, in this case, doesn't zoom out. You've, you can see the barrel doesn't change. It maintains its length all the time. And you set your aperture in the little LCD window here that you want. And I've done some quite good results with it. So I wonder what these beer can lenses are. The Americans are on about beer can, but you never heard the British calling lenses beer cans. Maybe because we prefer to drink out of bottles. I don't know. I don't drink look, don't drink beer. But that's what they call their famous beer can lens. It's very heavy, but it is very, very sharp. So here's a few pictures now I've taken to show you. I printed out. Now the first one, I've done a 16 by 12 exhibition print of this. That was taken with my Minolta 500 SI with the little 35 to 70. Now that this one here, 35 to 70 lens, and it's it's in our town of Brentwood. That's very very sharp. I did stop down to f8 to get a bit of depth of field. But the result's very, very sharp indeed. And then I put on the zoom lens. I put on the 
what was it? Oh, they're 3.5 to 4.5 lens. And I've written on the back what they are. These are some flowers in someone's garden as I walked past to the high street. This was taken with the lens stopped down to 5.6. So it's sharp here and it goes out of focus here. It's not that it's, the lens is soft, it's just a lack of depth of field. But I didn't want to stop down too much because I wanted a fast shutter speed. Then I took it indoors and I set up a, a dolly. This is with three flashes and the lens is stopped down to f16. And this is very sharp, all the hairs are resolved, well, it should be f16. You get lots of depth of field of course. Then the famous beer can. It's no use using these if you don't test it at full aperture. Well here we have the famous beer can at full aperture on the crest of an old courthouse in my town. A bit of French there, Dieu et Montois. And on his soir qui mal pense. Anybody with French can translate that. But the detail is ex exceptionally good at f4 with the famous beer can. Then I went up to the churchyard and I took that and that is stopped down only to 5.6 but all the details of the bricks are resolved nicely. It's a good test. Then I've got a couple of old ladies chatting. That was taken at full aperture and the autofocus is accurate and that is on the 1985 Minolta AF7000, the very first autofocus. Then in our town we've got this busker, friendly piano accordion player. This was taken with a Minolta Dynax 5 with the 28 to 80 lens at f4.5 and I used a little bit of the fill-in flash to illuminate him. And again that is very sharp. Then I went out another day with the Minolta Dynax 5, I took the 28 to 100 and I took some pictures as of almost full aperture. Well, I think it's a 4.5, this was. The detail of all the bricks is resolved, and you can read all the menu here for what you want if you want meat pies and stuff. And the old pomp, a pub in our town is supposed to be haunted. Well, folks. I hope I've haunted you with a few details of the Minolta autofocus lenses. And um, that's my little collection, but it was free, and I'm very grateful. So, hope you've enjoyed this quick dissertation, and go around and play with your own lenses. Thanks for watching mine, anyway. Thank you, folks.